So we're going to start talking about triangles now. Why? Well, we've been talking about trigonometric functions. And whenever you talk about sine and cos and tan, really everyone immediately thinks triangles. Or at least most people who've taken the high school math probably think triangles because you did triangle after triangle after triangle. Uh, you looked at even buildings that were casting a shadow and surprise, surprise, you got a triangle. So using sine, cos, and tan is very commonly associated with solving triangles. We're not going to go into any big detail about it, but mostly we're going to be looking at say so-called right angle triangles. Ooh, which hopefully I can draw well. A right angle triangle is one with a 90 degree angle. This isn't quite a 90 degree angle, but I'm not a very good artist, so bear with me. This should be two lines that are perpendicular, intersect at a 90 degree angle. So this would be the idea, the ones we're looking at. Uh, we could study non-right angle triangles, and then you'd be using things like the sine and cosine law. Those aren't really going to add to our discussion. It's mostly just using your calculator at that point, taking the sine of something or the cos of something, uh, and just doing the math. So, I mean, we're going to see the right angle triangle is still just doing math, but we don't need to consider the other ones, those two sine and cosine laws, because they won't add anything to our discussion. So, anytime you're looking at one of these triangles, the key to remember is good old SOKATOA, something you may have heard before. So, Ka Toa. You might have nightmares from high school about this, or positive memories hopefully from high school of this, but it's a way to remember how to solve a triangle. So what we have is sine is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, cos is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse, tan is opposite over adjacent. So what does that all mean? Well, I'm going to draw an actual bigger, bigger triangle, bigger and hopefully a little bit better, but we'll see. Not going to bet. So we want to draw a big right angle triangle. Yeah, pretty good for me. Right angle, again assume these are perpendicular. And I'm going to label some sides. I'm going to call this theta 1. We often call, actually you know what, I'm going to call that theta. No point in using those subscripts if I don't have to. Call this theta. And I call this angle right here phi. So big line through the middle. Easier to differentiate between the two. And then I'm going to label these sides. Uh, what I'm going to do is call this B, this D, and this C. I don't want to use any of the letters we have up there to confuse you, so. Well, what do we got? According to Sokotoa, we can solve this triangle depending on what we have. But let's look at theta. So if I want to write sine, sine theta. Well, according to this memory trick, sine is opposite. Well, which opposite theta? It's the side opposite. These two are touching the theta. This one's opposite, so opposite would be D in our case, over hypotenuse. Well, hypotenuse is always the angle opposite the 90 degrees, or another way of thinking of it, it's always the length that is the longest. I believe I said, an theta, I mean I said angle. It's, hypotenuse is always the one across from the 90 degrees. The side, the length that's across from it, or you can ultimately think it's the longest side. So in this case, C is clearly the longest side. That will always be our hypotenuse. So sine opposite or hypotenuse, D over C. And if we we're doing cosine of theta, in this case, it's adjacent or hypotenuse. Which one's adjacent? Well, right now you could think technically C and B are adjacent to theta. But C we know is hypotenuse, it's the longest one. So our adjacent must be B. And again, over hypotenuse, C. Tan, tan theta is equal to opposite over adjacent. Opposite D, adjacent B. We could also solve for the, like for the phi term. If we want, we can think sine of phi, this weird symbol, still is opposite over adjacent. This one's now the opposite, the B term. B over C. C is always the hypotenuse still. Cos, phi, we can think again adjacent. D over C, our hypotenuse. Finally, tan is simple, oops, tan of phi is going to equal our opposite B opposite of the angle, B over D are adjacent. So really, why is this important? This helps us solve a triangle. 
If I have any two of the things, I can solve the third. If I know an angle and a side, I can solve the other side. Or if I know both sides, I can solve the angle. So it's using that sine and cos we've been used to. If I had theta is a certain angle, say 30 degrees, I'd take sine of that, get a number. If I wanted to solve d, I'd multiply and isolate for d. So it would be c times whatever this is. If I know two of these, I can solve the third. And it's just using all of these variations of the formula. The only other one we really should know is so-called Pythagorean's theorem. What this is, is it relates the lengths to each other. Pythagorean's theorem says the square of the hypotenuse, so the square of our longest length, or in our case c, c squared, that's equal to the sum of the square of the other two sides. What does that mean? Well, b squared plus d squared. The sum of the square of the other two sides. So we, if we have two lengths, we can solve the third. And if we have a length and an angle, we can get another length. And we're going to look at some of these cases in a little bit, but these are really the rules you need to know to solve a right angle triangle. So we'll apply that in one second.